the baby boomers are uh, having this way. We're going to be hell on wheelchairs. You are, because you're, fr you're front end of the baby boomers. I boom. am front end. Yep. I'm back end. This book is sort of fair warning to the retirement home. And I don't think the A, medical community, and B, the retirement community, is going to know what hit them I when you guys get there. so glad you said that. That's exactly my view. They're the last institution mm -hmm. that has been untouched by the 19th century, much less the 20th or the 21st. Well, they're touched by capitalism. I mean, the retirement home industry, as opposed to the nursing home industry, which is a whole different set of factors, but retirement homes are increasingly going to be big business and big rich business because people can, who could afford um, the um, massive amounts that it costs to live in a decent retirement home are going to be really demanding. And we're not, we're not even a nice generation, you know. We're, we're used to control and independence and having our own way and someone who tries to subtle us into making ceramic candy dishes at craft class it's just going to be in so much trouble. And you guys are less likely to want to make candles and more likely to make bongs, and frankly. Uh, exactly. Unless, you know, we're the kind of people who have spent our lives already making candles. Yeah. Totally not going to happen. L let's talk about the uh, the four yeah. major characters in, in, in this one. Go through them. Okay. Sylvia uh, has been a sort of community leader. She's the widow of a lawyer and former city councillor. and She's been on all the sort of social agency boards and cultural boards and so on. So um, a bit uh, of an autocrat, I think, um, but an, to me an amusing one. She has the kind of tongue on her that I, I am trying to develop myself, a bit, bit of a sharp edge on her there. Um, Greta Bauer is, uh, by contrast, has been a shop clerk. Um, scraping by making a living because she and her husband, when they were young, immigrated from Germany, uh, had three daughters and then he was killed in an accident. So she's been a single mom scraping by and her daughters are chipping in so she can live at the Idle Inn, which I personally think is a really clever name for the place. Um, George is a uh, survivor of a stroke, quite a serious stroke. He ran a shoe store in town, so he's been a, a small business owner and operator and, and quite a handsome man in his time. And then there's Ruth Friedman, who is a much more recent widow um, and who is, uh, she calls herself the baby of the place because she's like 74. In terms of, uh, of plot, everything mm -hmm. sort of, um, they're into a new home, they're in a new situation, and then Ruth throws them a big curveball and that's kind mm -hmm. of what gets things really rolling. Yeah. She has a, gives a hint of it fairly early on. Well, she actually says what she intends to do, but she doesn't tell them until farther in. Yeah. And that is? She wants to die at a particular time in her life, which is coming up, and uh, she doesn't want to do it alone. And in fact, physically can't do the method that she has in mind, so would like their help. And um, so we get into the matters of right to die for one thing, control over your own body, which you know is another and going to be increasingly a huge issue. Matters of choice when they carried out the the other end, you know, we're used to talking about like reproductive choice that's gone on for decades. Now I think we're about to hit the the wall on the next level of, of personal autonomy. I want to make it clear that this is not a down book. It's I've quite the opposite. Even though Ruth is bound and determined mm -hmm. that she's going to get snuffed at a certain time at yep. a certain place and that these people are going to be the ones to do it, it's damn funny. Thank you. It's supposed to be damn funny. But um, when I'm reading, and actually when I'm living too, I, there aren't many circumstances that have no humor whatever, you know, or no comedy. For you. For me. But I think you're one of those, and I, I feel the same way about life. Yeah. I mean, I just think, I, in my, in my, ideally, I am laughing my head off as some ex, uh, some husband kills me. I mean, that's just the yeah. way I want to go. You, you go out with, oh my God, is this <laughs> ironic or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, ah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's the way I would like to go. Yeah. And, and I think we see the world the same way. But there are lots of people who, who. There are lots of people who don't. Well, 
you hate to say there are lots of people with no sense of humor because that's not true. Um, but I think lacking a gift for comedy, and not just in writing but in life, means that you you haven't quite got the knack of perspective, you know. And if you haven't got any knack for perspective, then then you're even farther away than most of us are from wisdom. You know, you just you're never going to get it. So I think it's actually it's in a peculiar way it's a really serious subject that and it has meaning I think maybe comedy gets underrated be, but to somehow have really serious issues and the, as far as I'm concerned ex exit lines is full of serious issues but it also as you say is funny I hope and and to recognize that that comedy is serious it's a gift some readers have and some don't. But most do, I think. Most, um, most people realize the comedy in them. The book is Exit Lines. I've been speaking with the novelist Joan Barfoot and Exit Lines, published by Cut Off Canada.